When you've got CAN communication faults with one or multiple control modules on a vehicle, as well as fault codes U0001 through to U0009, then you've got a CAN bus problem. In this video, I'm going to run through everything you'll need to do in order to diagnose what the fault is and how to fix it. Hi everyone, I'm Tim and this video is all about diagnosing faults on the high-speed CAN bus using nothing but a multimeter. But before I go through the diagnostic process, let me give you a very brief breakdown of what the CAN bus is and more importantly, how you know that you've got a problem with it. The CAN in CAN bus stands for Controller Area Network and it is the most common communication protocol used in the automotive industry. It functions as a data sharing system which allows multiple ECUs to communicate with each other without the need for a central computer or complex wiring. The bus refers to the physical wiring which connects all the ECUs together on this network and this consists of two wires, CAN high and CAN low, which are twisted together to reduce electromagnetic interference. The network uses differential voltage signalling to pass data between modules, with the voltage switching from 2.5 to 3.5 volts in CAN high and 2.5 to 1.5 volts in CAN low. These networks usually have two 120 ohm terminating resistors located inside a module at each end of the circuit, which helps stabilise voltage levels and maintain signal integrity for clear and efficient communication. Modules on the CAN bus are split into either high, low or medium priority depending on their function. Typically, safety critical or drivetrain modules are part of the high-speed CAN bus network, such as the instrument cluster, engine ECU and transmission control module. And this is the network we will be diagnosing today. As the high-speed CAN bus contains the modules necessary for the vehicle to function, when there is a fault with it, you will often have some pretty serious symptoms including multiple warning lights on the instrument cluster, non-start of the vehicle, and no CAN communications with a single or multiple control units when scanning the vehicle using diagnostics. You will also likely have a number of network and vehicle integration fault codes for communication issues, such as U0001 to U0009, U0100, and many more, as well as powertrain codes such as P0606. Now, faults on the CAN bus network are relatively uncommon, so if you only had fault codes for one control module, then naturally you would assume that it was just that module which is faulty. Only when there are multiple codes for communication issues will the CAN bus typically be investigated. Now, before we jump into the diagnosis, I just wanted to ask you to keep supporting our channel by hitting the subscribe button. It's quick, easy and free to do so, and it will allow us to keep making great content for you to enjoy. Thank you for all the support, and let's get to it. With that out of the way, let's quickly look at the OBD2 port, also known as the Data Link Connector, or DLC. This port serves as a universal access point for diagnosing and reading the vehicle's computer systems, and it's an easy access point in which to diagnose CAN bus network faults from. A number of the pins are the same across all vehicle manufacturers, with pins 16, 4 and 5 always being battery positive, chassis ground and signal ground. Vehicles with CAN bus networks usually have pins 6 and 14 for CAN high and CAN low, but as we will be completing a lot of tests at the OBD2 port during this diagnosis, you should make sure you have the correct pin out for your port before you start. It is also extremely handy if you are able to access a full wiring diagram for your vehicle, as you can see how many modules are on the high-speed CAN bus network, as well as how many harness separation points there are where a potential fault could lie. This will also show you if you have a high-speed CAN network, as well as a low or medium-speed network, and any gateway modules. But in this example, we will just be looking at the high-speed network with no gateway modules. Finally, you'll need to make a note of which modules have communication faults and which don't, before you start carrying out any tests and disconnecting any connectors. Now that's all the prep done, let's start the diagnosis. First check the battery voltage, as a bad battery can cause CAN bus communication faults with multiple modules. Next, you will need to perform a few tests at the OBD2 port, but it is important that the CAN bus network is asleep before you start. Turn the ignition off and remove the key, and after a short while the bus should go to sleep. To confirm this, check the voltage between the two CAN lines, pin 6 and 14. If zero volts is displayed, then the network is asleep. 
Next, perform a resistance check between the two can lines at pin 6 and 14 on the OBD2 port. Due to the two terminating resistors at either end of the network, the reading here should be around 60 ohms. If the reading is open circuit, then there is likely a fault in the wiring between the DLC and the main can lines in between the two terminating resistors. If the reading is higher than 60 ohms, but not 120 ohms, then there is high resistance somewhere on the network, which is usually caused by bad terminal contacts. If the reading is 120 ohms, then there is an open circuit somewhere on the bus between the two resistors. However, if the reading is lower than 60 ohms, then there is a short between can high and can low. These simple tests at the OBD2 port are really helpful when diagnosing what kind of CAN bus fault you might have, and you will typically see CAN bus communication faults with just one module or all modules depending on the fault. All of these will need investigating further to determine where the fault lies within the bus. However, if you got a good reading of 60 ohms when performing this initial resistance check, it doesn't mean that there isn't a fault on the bus, even if there is just one module with a CAN bus communication fault. You could still get a 60 ohm reading with an open circuit being present in the wiring to one of the modules or in the module itself, providing it is not a gateway module or it doesn't contain a terminating resistor. This is possible as the module and its wiring isn't causing any interference with the main CAN lines between the two terminating resistors. So if you do have CAN bus communication faults with one or multiple modules, but you had a good reading of 60 ohms when testing resistance at the OBD2 port, then you should disconnect the affected module or modules and complete a resistance check between the two CAN terminals at the modules connector. If you don't have a pin diagram for the connector, you can identify which wires are the CAN lines as they will be twisted together. If the multimeter reading is OL, then there is an open circuit in the loom which will need to be repaired. However, if you get a reading here of 60 ohms, then you know the wiring is good and the fault likely lies with the module itself. However, you should check the connector and plug for any bent pins, corrosion, damage or poor terminal tension, as all of these can cause an open circuit. Find out how to test for terminal tension by watching our video here. If these checks are good, then you likely have a faulty module. But before you condemn the unit, it is worth checking it is receiving the correct power supply and that it has a good ground. This is usually only relevant when you also have powertrain fault codes for the module. So if you do, then watch our video on how to diagnose an ECU with no communication by clicking here. If you had any other modules with CAN bus communication faults, then you should complete the same test process at each of their connectors to systematically rule out each module and its wiring. Now, if you got a reading of 120 ohms when testing at the OBD2 port, then there is an open circuit somewhere in the network between the two terminating resistors. This reading will also typically be accompanied by all the units on the CAN bus network suffering from CAN bus communication faults. This will be caused by an open in one of the modules containing the terminating resistor or in the wiring between the two. To diagnose where this fault is, use your vehicle's wiring diagram to identify any harness separation points on the network that you can disconnect in order to split the circuit in half. Once you have done this, repeat the test at the OBD2 port. If the reading stays the same, then you can determine the fault lies within the disconnected side of the circuit. Now, we need to know if the fault lies within one of the modules or the wiring. To do this, conduct the same test as before, but this time test at the connector. If the multimeter reading is OL, then you'll need to systematically work through the wiring, identifying any points where you can split the circuit up until you find the location of the fault. As we just mentioned, a good reading when checking resistance at the OBD2 port doesn't mean that there isn't a fault on the CAN bus network. There could also be a short to ground or short to voltage affecting one or both of the CAN lines, which will need to be investigated again at the OBD2 port. To test for a short to voltage, set your multimeter to DC volts and then check the voltage between chassis ground, pin 4, and both CAN high and CAN low, pins 6 and 14. If the bus is asleep, then there should be no voltage displayed here. So if there is, then there is a short to voltage somewhere on the bus. To test for a short to ground, simply complete the same tests, but this time check for continuity. If there is any continuity displayed, then there is a short to ground somewhere on the bus. 
If any of the readings at the OBD2 port indicated either a short to ground, short to voltage or shorted bus wires, then you will likely have CAN communication faults with all the modules over the high speed CAN network. This is because any short will cause the standard voltage references for CAN high and CAN low to become out of tolerance and will result in the whole network malfunctioning. To determine where a short could lie in the circuit, we need to know if the fault lies within one of the modules or the wiring. Similar to before, start by disconnecting a module with CAN bus communication faults present and then conduct the same test which gave you a bad reading initially at the OBD2 port. Repeat this for each module with communication faults and if the reading stays the same, then reconnect the module and move on to the next one. If the reading disappears, then you have identified a faulty module. If you have no change in the readings, then the fault lies somewhere within the CAN network's wiring loop. To narrow down where in the loom this fault could lie, use your vehicle's wiring diagram to identify any harness separation points on the network that you can disconnect in order to split the circuit in half. Once you have done this, repeat the test at the OBD2 port and see if the fault has disappeared. If it has, then you can determine the fault lies within the loom on the disconnected side of the circuit. But if the faulty reading remains, then you'll need to systematically work through the wiring, identifying any points where you can split the circuit up until you find the location of the fault. If you find the fault to be with a module during your diagnosis, then we can help. We remanufacture loads of different types of electronic control units from all types of manufacturers. So click here to find out how you can send your unit in to us. Thanks for watching. We hope you've now got the knowledge to accurately diagnose any kind of fault affecting the high speed CAN bus. If you found the video useful, then please hit the thumbs up button and click subscribe so you can keep expanding your diagnostic know-how with all our new videos. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.